All right, so we're going to be working on this activity that involves using a topographical map because using a topographical map involves using vector quantities, okay, doing a little bit of vector analysis, finding vector components, okay, but in a way that's not you sitting in front of a worksheet staring at it and whatever. Okay, we did that for a couple days last week. This is going to break things up, let you work with other people. Okay, obviously, anytime you're working with other people, your mask needs to be on. Okay, so you're going to have to wear your mask a bit more today. Sorry about that. Okay, uh, but when you're facing each other, you need to do that. Um, so you're going to have this topographical map. How many people have ever used a topographical map before? Yeah, that number gets smaller and smaller every time I ask that question. Google Maps is ruining an entire generation on half reading. Okay, anyway, that's beside the point. Okay, a topographical map is designed to represent a three-dimensional space in two dimensions. All right, so you can see if you're looking at your maps, there's a whole whack of squiggly lines, okay, all over the map, all these little squiggly lines. Those squiggly lines are contour lines, and they represent elevation. All right, so if you look at some of them, some of them have numbers on them, like this one is a 2,000 on it, okay, um, you'll see them every once in a while, they'll be that, okay. They represent how steep something is. The further apart those contour lines are, because I think on these they're every 10 or 20 meters. Okay, so each contour line represents an increase or decrease in altitude of 10 to 20 meters. Okay, so if you've got a whole bunch of contour lines and they're like right on top of each other, what are you looking at? A cliff. Yeah, okay. So if we're looking at like right here, okay, on this map right here, that, that's, that's kind of cliff-like, okay? Th this is pretty steep, where this part's not so steep, okay? They're quite a bit further apart, all right? Uh, the reason they have that on there is so you can kind of pick your route and know where it's safe to walk, okay? It would not be advisable for you to uh, say, my route is going to include, I'm just gonna go right over here. That's the short way and there'll be a pile of broken bones at the bottom, okay? You probably don't want to go that way, okay? You probably want to pick a way that's, you know, following the contour lines as opposed to crossing them, okay? I wouldn't go over here because these are really close together and it would be really steep, okay? But what I would instead do is maybe try to do something like this. Look for places where the contour lines are a little bit further apart, okay? And maybe try and walk along them and then you kind of switch back. You'll often see that paths in the mountains do this, okay? and they switch back and forth kind of through there. There's not gonna be too many places where you're gonna have to do something like that, okay? but you'll run into a couple here and there. All right, then we'll kind of follow how a contour map works. The other thing on this contour map, okay, anything that's in green is below the tree line. Okay, if you ever looked at the mountains, you can see there's kind of a line where the trees stop and the rock starts. Okay, that's based on altitude and temperature. Okay. Um, so anything that's in the green is below the tree line. Anything that's white is above the tree line. Okay. Um, red line is road. Okay. Dotted lines are paths okay, or trails that you can walk along. I think there's also a black line at some point on your map which represents a railroad track. Okay. You can consider that to be like a trail, but I don't think you'll want to walk on it anyway. It's dangerous to walk on a train track, especially if you're wearing earphones. You look at me like that's never happened before. I see people. Okay, um, so don't do that because that's dumb, and you'll get hurt. All right, so um, your assignment is first to plan your routes to each of the destinations. So when you get the map put together, it's going to look like this. Okay? There's three pieces to it, and they just go together like this. So you might have to trim a little bit of white off, and then I'll, I'll put a roll of tape, and you guys can tape them together. Okay? Um, so you're going to put them together like this, and then you're going to go from start to one, and from one to two, two to three, three to four, and four to five. Okay? But again, you have to kind of plan your route. Take a route that makes sense. Going over the top of the highest mountain just because you can is not necessarily the shortest or best route. Okay? If there's a path, you probably want to follow it. Okay? Now, I've made it so that on some days you really can't, and you have to go off the trail a little bit. Okay? Like when you're going from uh, two to three, you're not going to just walk across here. That's not really feasible. Okay? But there's a river valley you could easily follow okay? that would be much easier to go along. Okay? Doesn't involve a lot of climbing. 
climbing, doesn't involve, you know, cliffs, things like that. All right. Um, does everyone kind of follow what you're going to be doing there? Okay, in terms of just planning the route. That'll be the first thing you and your group will do is plan your route. Okay? Then there's going to be some measurements that you're going to have to do. Okay? The measurements are you need to get the total distance and total displacement for each day. Okay? So that's going to be measured with a ruler. Now, that could be a bit problematic because are you walking in a straight line? Okay, so for example, if you look on your middle map, okay, you can see day one, you're going from start to one here, and there's a path that runs all the way along here. And it's probably advisable to take that path. That would be the smartest route from start to one. But I can't measure that line with a ruler because it's not straight. So what you do is you take your headphone cord and you put it on the map and you make it take the shape of the path. Then you pinch the beginning and the end and pull it straight and put it on the ruler. And now you've measured a curved line with a ruler. Pretty smart. Right? It's not my first day. Okay? All right. Um, so that's how you'll measure the, the crooked line. That will get you the distance because that's how far you actually walk. But you also need the displacement. How will you get that? Just a straight line between both. Take a ruler, draw the line on. I'm going to cheat because I can. Okay, so I'm going to draw. There's my. There's a line that represents my displacement. Okay, easily drawn. But displacement's a vector quantity. What else do I need? I need direction. All right. Now this is where people are like, well, I got a protractor. No, don't use a protractor. Okay, I don't want to see you using a protractor. Okay. What you can do is if you look closely at this map, you see there's grid lines. Those grid lines go north-south and east-west. So all you have to do is draw a line parallel to those that will be your north component and a line that's parallel to the east-west ones that will be your east-west component. Can you measure those directly with a ruler? Will that allow you to get the angle? In fact, if you've already measured the displacement, because you have to, it's one of the numbers I want, you would only have to measure one other side in order to calculate the angle using true. Okay, everybody all right with that idea? So we're using the skills we learned last week, but just in a different way, okay? So for each day, what I'm looking for is distance, displacement, okay, with its vector, and average speed, average velocity, and total time on trail, okay? So I'm looking for five things day. Most of them just involve measure. Okay? Now, if I'm going to get the average speed, what two things do I need? Total distance and total time. So we're using some V equals D over T here too. We're kind of reviewing that. Okay? I need total distance and total time. How am I going to get total time? Well, the answer is I'm going to tell you how fast you can walk at various points on the graph or on the, on the map. Okay, so if you go back to the first page here, okay, there are rules. Okay? The first rule is altitude affects speed. Okay? If you are on trail, that means you're on a dotted line, okay? below the tree line, that's in the green area, okay? then you can make 1.5 meters per second. Okay? You can walk at a speed of 1.5 meters per second if you are on a trail in the green. If you are above the tree line and on a trail, you can only walk at 1.2 meters per second because there's less oxygen up there and you just slow down naturally. You just get tired faster. Okay. The other rule is the bushwhacker rule. You are going to have to go off trail. I made it so. Okay, you'll have to go off trail. Okay, if you are off trail below the tree line, you can only go 0.75 meters per second because while well, you're bushwhacking, that's a lot slower trail. Okay? You got brush in your way and all kinds of other things. Okay? And if you're above the tree line, you can actually walk at 1.0 meters per second. There's no trail, but there's also no trees. So you can actually walk faster above the tree line off the trail than you can below. Okay? So those are your speeds. That means if I'm looking at day one okay, and I'm on a trail the entire way, 
I walked at 1.5 meters per second the entire time. Can I figure out how long it would take me? Yes. Okay. T equals D over V. Right? My average speed for the day would be 1.5 meters per second because I didn't walk at any other speed the whole day. Okay. Now, average velocity would be the total displacement divided by the whole time, which I calculated already. So I'm going to use that number twice. Okay, so those are the five things. Distance, displacement, total time, average speed, average velocity. Five things for each thing. Okay, easy things to calculate. A couple of them are easy to measure. All right, so day one is super easy because you're just on a trail the whole time. Okay, it does get a little bit more complex if you get off trail like you will up here or you decide to go over, um, over the tree line then you got to factor in those different speeds. So what I usually tell people is if you're planning a path where you're going to do that, then I would use okay, different colors. So let's say I'm, oh, I'm on the trail below the tree line and now I'm off the trail because I'm above the tree or on the trail above the tree line and now I'm bushwhacking so I'm below the tree line off trail. Okay, so I'm using different colors. So I measure this much, I had to walk this speed for this far. I had to walk at this speed for this far and then it's easier to keep track of everything. Okay. Are you all right with that? Okay, the, uh, the uh, third and final rule is the silly salmon rule. If you are off trail and have to cross a river, which are the little squiggly blue lines all over the place on the map, okay, you add 15 minutes to your total time. Because if you're off trail and you cross a river, there's not going to be a what? Not going to be a bridge. Okay? And you have to be careful when you're crossing a river okay? and there's no bridge. You could slip and fall or whatever. Okay? Uh, so you add 15 minutes to your time. If you're on the trail and you cross a river, no big deal. There'll be a bridge. Don't change your speed at all. Okay? So if you cross a river, you're on a trail, don't worry about it. If you're off the trail, you cross a river, 15 minutes. So every time you do it. Okay? Add it to your total time. All right, so as we've talked about here, okay, what I'm going to want to see handed in is calculations for distance, which is basically just a measurement, okay, speed, displacement, velocity, and time for each day. Okay, for each day. Triangles drawn on the map, okay, as well as uh, the, the uh, paths and directions you traveled, including vectors, okay, so I'm going to want to see something that looks like this on your map for each day. Okay, um, and then at the end, calculations of total distance, total displacement, total time, average velocity for the entire trip. Okay, for the entire trip. Now, that's not, a few of you are going, sweet, it's going to be zero. No, it's not. Okay, point number five is over here. You started here, so you do have a total displacement. Okay, um, it's not, you're not going back to where you started. All right, um, okay, so your group will hand in your map as well as your calculations. Okay, so uh, everybody should do this. Okay, so as you're working, everyone should be making their map. Here's why that's a good idea. First off, nobody has to touch the map from somebody else. And nobody spreads germs. Okay, and thirdly, if somebody ends up sick, you don't lose everything because only one member of the group had the map. That happens all the time. If everybody's making their own copy of the map, that will never happen because people will be here with a copy of the map at all times. Okay? So make sure that everybody is making their own copy of the map and their own copy of the calculations. Okay, um, so your group, yeah, you're going to hand that in, okay? Um, yeah, and we already talked about the color coding. Now, in terms of figuring out how far everything is, the scale on the map is 1 to 50,000. So when you measure something on the map, you're going to get something in centimeters. Obviously, you're not hiking 13 centimeters. Okay? So you will have to convert it. One centimeter on the map is 500 meters in reality. So whatever you got in centimeters, multiply by 500, and you've got it in meters. Okay? And obviously, your answers need to be in meters. Okay, so it'll be out of 20 marks, 15 of which are going to be your map and your calculations. Five are going to be how long you get along with your group. If there's kicking, scratching, biting, or whatever, okay, that marks deteriorates quickly. So get along and don't get each other sick. I won't talk too much.
Um, yeah. Okay. Make sure your mask is on. Okay. All of that kind of good stuff. Then we kind of follow what we're doing. Okay. I'm going to give you today and most of tomorrow. Okay. To work on this because you kind of need to be with your group when you're working. All right. If there are questions as you're working, just let me know. Okay. All right.